let's go ahead and get started. Our last class, tragically, won't be seeing you anymore. But there are a couple good things. One, uh, I'd love to stay in touch with you all. Please uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, keep me posted on your progress. Especially let me know if you use any communication skills in your career that you want to share uh, and tell me how that went for you. Also, you should be happy that today is a very exciting class. We're going to do improvisation, do some fun exercises, and think about how that applies to business and how that applies to your careers. Uh, just a quick housekeeping with the day being the last class. If any of you have assignments or comments to submit for previous classes, please submit those by the end of the weekend, maybe late Sunday night. Does that, does that work for everyone? Need more time. There is a possibility of an incomplete, but just, you know, I don't think anyone's too far behind. Yes, sir. Is there? Yeah, there's a video tape okay. for the uh, the initial discussion, and then the first first couple of scenarios. Everything up until the interviews, you should have sound for the interviews. We had a problem where I had to do something with the feedback, so I couldn't get sound. But there should be some. Should be some stuff. Okay. All right. So, improvisation. Should we start? All right. So, improvisational acting. This is theater without written dialogue. This is scenes, a variety of scenes. You'll stand up here, do various acting things, and you'll just make up the dialogue off the top of your head. I'll explain in a minute that I have complete confidence in your ability to do that, to think of the right dialogue. But first, let's ask ourselves, why are we doing this? Why is improvisational acting a useful concept, useful technique for you as business folks to develop? Truthy. Uh, yeah. yeah, think on your feet. Be spontaneous, flexible. Be able to handle challenges that are thrown at you in a professional environment. If the environment changes, someone like Dave shows up to fire you, and, you know, come in, <laughs> switch the whole company, or not fire you, someone, someone like Dave shows up to overhaul your whole company. You want to be able to adjust quickly. You don't want to be the person who can't get on board, the person who can't learn the new systems. You want that flexibility and spontaneity. Yes. What else? Seize the moment. All right, take advantage of opportunity. I may not know exactly what I want to say, but I, I have an idea. Let me just jump in and, and go with it. Good. Yeah. What else? Maybe like, even stall tactics. Like okay. How to kind of maybe deflect or delay? If you make someone ask a question again, you know, be okay. prepared to kind of slow them down. Okay, so so thinking on your feet. We'll put that in the okay. thinking on your feet. Fantastic. So I don't have the exact thing I want to say or don't know the exact thing I want to say right now, but let me let me fill the space for a minute, and then someone else is going to have an idea. All right, that's something else we learned from improv, how to fill the time until someone else has an idea and take advantage of their idea. Anything else? So uh, thinking on our feet, spontaneity, flexibility, Teamwork, listening skills. One thing you'll discover very, very quickly in improv is you can't do the whole scene by yourself. It just becomes you trying to talk and talk and talk, and I can't talk anymore. Not only is that very difficult to do, but the audience doesn't want to see that. The audience doesn't want to see you just talking at them. They want to see some interesting interaction between you and the other characters on the stage. So you need to listen to the people that you're interacting with. And the suggestions someone else makes in the improvisation scene, it may not make sense to you right away that that's a good idea. It may not be something that you think, oh yeah, that would be a wonderful idea for a scene. But if you listen to it and you try to encourage them to talk more, then that scene can go somewhere. 
And then ultimately, in the end, the audience will say, oh, that's so funny how you took that weird idea and you made it into this great conclusion to the story. Now, the same concept can apply to business. Someone who has an idea in a team meeting or whatever sort of professional dialogue you're engaged in, they may have an idea that may not make sense to you at first. It may not be in the form that you're used to hearing it in. And if you just dismiss it out of hand, obviously it's not going to go anywhere. But sometimes if you can create an environment where let me listen to it, let me think creatively about how that could work, you discover things that you may not have thought possible, you may not have realized, oh, that, could have, that was such a good idea. I'm so glad I didn't just miss it out of hand. So listening skills, teamwork, spontaneity, flexibility, creativity, problem solving skills. All right, you want to be able to solve problems when you're thrown abstract problems. And a lot of the improvisation scenes are designed to force you to solve problems. You'll be given a challenge, right? You need to reconcile these two things. And the audience enjoys watching you struggle with that. And if you do that in a way that satisfies the audience from a storytelling plot standpoint, the audience says, oh yeah, that was great, that was so fun. So same thing in business. You're gonna need to apply out of the block, out of the box thinking at times to solve creative problems in today's environment. So, that's why we're doing improv. What's next? How do we do improv? Okay, so how do you all who have, I assume, very little acting experience, very little performing experience, how are you gonna stand up and do these whole, these whole big monologues, these whole scenes? Well, first thing I wanna tell you is that you have what I consider to be the two most important credentials, abilities, already, as you sit here just by virtue of being functioning adults, you have them. In addition to the fact that I've been with you for eight weeks and I know you have these skills. One, your very vivid imagination. Two, your profound understanding of storytelling techniques. So let's start with them one at a time. Very vivid imagination. This may not be a muscle that you flex very often, but you still have it. Let me give you a couple examples. Have any of you ever daydreamed about winning the lottery? Okay, so I just put the idea in your head. You're going to win $400 million. Right? That's how much you're going to have in your pocket. Your mind just goes somewhere. You think about what you're going to do tomorrow. You think about calling your boss, saying I quit. You think about what you might do with your friends over the next year. You can concoct in the whole story in your head just by having that thought in your head. Who knows where it would be? Maybe you're thinking of your mansion years from now. I don't know, overdosing in drugs in Beverly Hills. I, what, whatever, whatever comes into your head, it comes there. When I just put this idea that you may win the lottery. Right? It's just a matter of thinking about how you can shape that imagination into some sort of story, some sort of scene. Let me give you another example. And you don't have to answer, just think in your head. Uh, and we'll think about how this sparks your creativity and your imagination. Have any of you ever been out on a blind date? Blind date. All right, I see some people shaking their heads no, but you, you perhaps can imagine. So before you get ready, before you go out on a blind date, I imagine there might be a lot of scenarios that go through your head. You might think of some really, really bad scenarios. You might get nervous. Think of all the terrible things, awkward things that might happen on this experience. Right? You're, you're, you're coming up with a whole story in your head just by the idea. And similarly, you might have some really good scenarios going on in your head. We'll just, we'll just leave those to your imagination. But you have it. You have an imagination that can think of all these things just by putting an idea in your head. Yes? Does it differ with gender? Does imagination differ with gender? Uh, that, uh, I, that's a good question. I, I don't know the answer to that. Does anyone have any ideas? Do, do men and women have different levels of imagining stories? No, okay. Are you psychologists? I'm not a psychologist, but um, we need to go into details of different things while storytelling. Some might think of women more. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, so, so, so I put the idea in your head that you're going to have a blind date. Maybe there's a male version of that fantasy, and maybe there's a female version of that fantasy, perhaps. But I, I think everyone has a very vivid imagination. I, would, I wouldn't say I, I, I have no experience, no understanding of any, any difference in terms of the level of imagination. Right? I think it's the same. So, vivid imagination. The other thing you have, which is going to help you do improv scenes, is a profound understanding of storytelling techniques. So in your lives, you've seen hundreds of movies, you've read hundreds of books, you've heard thousands of stories. So you know what makes a good story. When you see a movie that you really like, and you walk out of that movie, you have generally a pretty good understanding of what you liked about that movie. You might say, yeah, that was really suspenseful. Yeah, that character was just so engaging. Or if you didn't like a story, you didn't like a movie, you understand what you didn't like about it. You say, you yeah, know, that plot, that just wasn't believable. It didn't make sense that that character would do that. Or it was so predictable. I knew exactly where the story was going, and it didn't, it didn't engage me. It didn't teach me anything new. So these are the skills that you'll use when you're developing an improv scene. You'll think about what would make sense for this character to do. What would make sense, given that I've had this audience suggestion about what the plot is, and my partner has suggested something else, how can I reconcile those two things in a way the audience is going to say, oh yeah, yeah that story makes sense. Now it's harder to do when you have the pressure on you and when you're up here leading the story, but you still have that understanding. And you can sometimes do it in the moment. You can sometimes reflect afterwards and say, oh yeah, of course it would have made more sense if I had done that. And as you're watching your classmates, you'll, you'll see it. You'll say, oh, that was such a fascinating way they tied the loose ends of that plot together. Or that was such a fascinating way the team worked together to make, make a presentation that made sense. And it's not, these are not, it's not critique that I will give you because of my years of teaching and years of acting. It's just storytelling, understanding. Just what makes a good story. Okay. Any questions, comments on that? So you have a very vivid imagination. You have a profound understanding of storytelling techniques. Those are the two things I think you need to be a good improvisational actor. What you need on top of that is a little direction. I'm going to tell you a few quick improv techniques, just three improv techniques. I think it's on the, the next page or whatever it is. Those three techniques I want to tell you about how you can craft your you know, storytelling, understanding, and imagination. First is offer. The second is accept. And the third is, is I think, build a story. I just want to remind you about things you already know about a story. In terms of offer, what that means is you throw out, you throw out, throw out ideas. So if I'm doing a scene with someone, I would throw out an idea. It's an offer. I would say, gosh, it uh, sure is scary down here in this abandoned mine shaft. That's an offer. We're in an abandoned mine shaft, and it's scary. Right, I've, I've set up a scene that we could do. Another offer. I could say, you know, I'm really mad that you had an affair with my wife. Okay, I've thrown out an offer. I've constructed a potential dialogue, a scene that we could have. This person has had an affair with my wife. That's an offer for the setting, an offer for the action that could take place. Second concept is accept. When my scene partner hears my offer, she or he wants to accept that offer. So if I say it's really scary to being down here in an abandoned mine shaft, my scene partner wants to say, yeah, it is really scary. And, you know, it's awful creepy to have that, that water flowing. I think it might do something dangerous. My scene partner is going to accept. Yes, we're in an abandoned mine shaft. Yes, it's scary. And then I might add something to it. My partner is not going to say, what are you talking about? We're not in an abandoned mine shaft. We're on an airplane. <laughs> what, are you crazy? Then it might become a scene about us arguing about reality, or maybe we could do a scene about I'm a psychiatric patient or something like that. But at some point, 
the scene partners, you're going to need to work together by throwing out offers, accepting that offer, and then taking it to the next level. And in terms of taking it to the next level, think about how you would build a typical story. I mentioned you have a profound understanding of storytelling techniques. Let me just remind you of a few things that you know about a story. A story, a good story, has continuity. You don't start in a, an abandoned mine shaft and then all of a sudden you're on Mars without explaining how you got there. You tell the audience the steps in getting there. You're in the abandoned mine shaft, you say, oh, look at this thing that says time portal, press here to go to Mars. All right, and you press the button, oh, now the audience sees how that continuity worked with the story. So you want to, you want to provide that. Uh, the other thing stories have, consistency. If you start a scene initially, say you and your scene partner are hiding from some crazy ex-boyfriend, you're trying to you know, get away from that person, and that's a dialogue that's going on, you don't all of a sudden forget about the crazy ex-boyfriend and then start walking around without explaining to the audience. And if the audience needs that loose end tied up, you don't want to leave the audience hanging. You want to finish that story. And the last thing you know about stories is they go somewhere. There's a progression. You don't just stay down in an abandoned mind shaft forever. Think about where you can take it. Think about how you can make it a little more exciting and up the stakes with this. So, uh, improvisation takes your imagination, takes your understanding of story, and in order to craft those, harness those, a couple of techniques, throw out offers, accept offers. Any questions? All right, what's next? I think we're just gonna get into some exercises, right? All right, yeah. So let's start, let's revisit our zip zap zoom exercise. That's, uh, if you recall, we're passing this imaginary ball of energy around with the zip, the zap, or the zoom. We're gonna have to be spontaneous, have to be warmed up physically. We're going to have to be flexible, be ready to accept offers that are thrown at us. And that will just get some blood flowing. So let's come up and let's do our zip zap zoom. All right, I like that enthusiasm, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was out for last Start us off, Dave. Let me let me come out of the circle. See the offers and accept them. Go, go ahead, Jose. Yeah, yeah, fast, fast. Zip, zip, zip. Yeah. Zip. Go ahead, Jim. 
Yeah. Zip, 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 uh, let's move on to that other exercise we did where we were in a circle, which was similar. Remember that play ball exercise where you picked up imaginary balls and tossed them around the circle? All right, Saeed, so why don't you start it off for us? Good, good, good. Stop for one second. One second. One second. What, what happened just there? What did we do? Change. All right. What, what might we call that? Improv. All right. But one of the terms. One of the terms I went over earlier. Progression. Yes. Kind of new. It was an offer. All right. She made a different offer. She said the offer is we're now throwing a small ball. All right. And Jim. Jim accepted that. She threw two right. Jim accepted that offer. He caught a small ball. He didn't, he didn't catch the same ball that was being thrown around. All right, so that's the offer and the accept and be ready to be spontaneous. Let's just do one more round. Let's do it, let's do it quick. Go ahead and start off. Yeah. Oh, okay, be, be ready. <laughs> Don't let that ball drop. Good job, Mike. Oh. <laughs> good, good. Okay, let that let that set that down, Jameson. All right, excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, we're throwing out some offers. We're accepting the offers, and we're ready to be spontaneous. Let's think a little bit about how we might develop characters. How we might just, on the spur of the moment, think about what kind of character we're playing and what our character might do. And I want to do an exercise that involves physicality where we walk around aimlessly, and we think about using different parts of our body to express a character. So I'm going to have you in a moment just walk around aimlessly, and then I'm going to tell you which part of your body I want you to lead with. I might say lead with your head, and then you're going to kind of walk around with your head forward. You think about what sort of character walks around with his or her head forward. Lead with your feet. And just play with that physicality a little bit. So, Go ahead, start walking around. You can take a little bit more space and just loosen up the shoulders. This is an individual exercise. All right, so walk around and lead with your chest. Yeah, lead with your chest and start thinking about what sort of person you are who just walks around with your chest puffed out like that. Yeah, and then add to it, you know? Yeah, lead with your chest a little bit. Maybe you put a little swagger in. Maybe that's appropriate. Yeah, I see something now. I see something happening. I see a character developing. Yes, good job, Renu. Fantastic. Good job, Trudy. All right, good, nice, professional. Yeah, I see an office person, James. Jameson. Oh. <laughs> All right, excellent. All right, now switch it up. Lead with your chin. Walk around, lead with your chin. Yeah. Boy, I saw some characters develop just like that. Lay, I saw something happen in your mind. Yeah, there you go, Daniel. Ooh, the confused guy, Evan. I like that. Very nice. Okay, thoughtful and old, Renu. I like that. Yeah. All right, good, pretentious Ricky. That's what I see. Okay. Oh, little confident, little cocky. I can't quite tell, Jose. All right. Last one. Lead with your groin. Lead with your groin. Okay. Lead with your groin. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, that's a good one. Number, yeah? Number different directions.
directions you can go with this one. All right, we've got we've got some innocent, timid characters. Okay, excellent. Good, good. Okay, stop, stop. Shake it off. Shake out the hands. All right, excellent. So I saw some characters develop very, very quickly. How did it work for you? When I just suggested something, were you able to think of the type of character who might walk like that? Did you feel like you would be able to jump right into an improv scene with that character? Or did you feel like you had no idea who you were or why you were walking around in this funny, in this funny shape? Pretty. Pretty what? Pretty obvious. What you mean. Okay, pretty obvious. I like the physicality can bring like an obvious character to you quickly. And I saw the imagination spark. I just saw when I mentioned lead with your chin, I just saw some people go all of a sudden like, oh, I'm the inquisitive person. I'm the pretentious person. Okay, so let's move on to the next exercise where we're still thinking about character development. And we're going to think about how we would interact as a character. This exercise is called Hey Old Buddy. I'm going to have you walk around aimlessly and then... When I say so, I'm going to say, turn to the person nearest to you and greet that person as if, and I'll fill in some information. I might say, greet that person as if they are your bitter enemy. And you would have a, a quick conversation that you might have with your bitter enemy. Talk for about 20, 30 seconds, and then you'll move on. And then we'll try a couple different scenarios and see, see what you can come up with with just a mere suggestion about who you are. Okay, so any, any questions? Does that make sense? All right, all right, so go back to our aimless walk around. Clear the acting palette. And you can start with, hey, old buddy, but you'll say it a different way, and that'll lead into, lead into different conversations. All right, so turn to the person nearest you and greet them as if they're your long-lost friend from summer camp. person nearest you, greet them as if they're your ex-spouse. Oh, my God. Oh, what are you doing? Why are you in my speech right now? Like, whatever you happens. You know, you know, you know, it's planned. I don't know. Like, you put the kids in there. No, listen, this is not happening. This is all your fault. You're always driving. Why are you doing this? You know what? She I do not. No. Why are you leaving the same there as me? Why are you leaving the same Why are you leaving the same there as me? Why are you leaving the same there as me? Why are you leaving the same I'm 
like everyone wanted to keep talking there. You know, like, you didn't want to, you didn't want to say, say goodbye to your ex spouse. <laughs> All right. Take a couple deep breaths. Keep walking. All right. Forget that character. Okay. Uh, turn the person nearest you and greet them as if they're your partner in crime who are going to rob a bank with later today. Someone else will say no, and then their idea, and no, and see see how you can plan your party. So go ahead and start planning your 
Little Sisters graduation party. So should we do a Oh yes, but can we do it in the backyard? No, maybe not. How about we do it at a park? No, maybe we'll do it on the water. Yes, but I'm not going to are we doing yes, but? Wait, are we just doing no? 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 Yes, just no. Just no. Just no. Just How about we go on a hill? Okay, I have to grab the planning for the way. person nearest you, and you're going to plan your best friend's bachelor party, or bachelorette party, your choice, and each person is going to respond with yes, but. So I'm going to say to Shruti, all right, let's have, um, let's play poker all night. Shruti's going to say yes, but. Yes, but I don't know how to play poker. All right, <laughs> and I'm going to respond to her with yes, but I don't think there would be enough time to teach you. And we're going to have a conversation starting each line with yes, but. All right, so plan your best friend's bachelor or bachelorette party and start each line except for the first one with yes, but. Go. So, uh, so um, I'm thinking let's do it since July 4th is coming up. Let's do it and we can all just like go to the fly to Miami. Yeah, but that's the only weekend where people can get off from work. That's like work on weekends, but that's like a long weekend. And people are like, you know, off already. And I understand that the sister's not going to be there, but it's just yeah, I, yeah, but the thing is, if we were to do it a different weekend, perhaps, then we'll just be Lucy's sister and our, you know, everyone else, the other bridesmaids are not going to be able to make it. All right, finish up planning the party. Finish up planning the party. And yeah, that's, that's the <laughs> No, no, no bachelor's <laughs> Say goodbye. I would have said that first thing you said. I was like, you're right. All right. All right. Take it off. Let that one go. All right. Last time. Turn to the person next to you. Let's plan your parents' 20th anniversary party. And the first phrase for each sentence is going to be yes and. All right, so I'm going to say, let's get all the siblings together. So Avina is going to say yes and, and she's going to continue with her suggestion. I'm going to say yes and, whatever she says back, and you're going to plan the party that way. So start planning your parents' 20th anniversary wedding. Yeah, we should probably go back to the Oh, I definitely have like a
your experience in trying to plan this part? Which was easier? We'll start with that. Al? Yes, it's kind of like the offering you were talking about. So don't, don't too yeah, you, you, it's easier. You probably build up some more momentum. Dan? Uh, it was easier at first, but then it started to get a little bit more painful. Oh, okay. Yes, Dan. Yes, Dan. Yes, Dan. Were you starting to take me to the boys by <laughs> 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 Excellent, excellent. All right, that's good thinking now. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so sometimes it can get out of hand. If you just do a scene where it's yes and, yes and, yes and, it's like, you know, just, just gets out of hand quickly. But at least it gives you a lot of ideas. It gives you things to work with. And that's what we, go ahead. I think yes but gives you more to work with than yes and. Because yes and, it just kept escalating until it became this crazy thing. But yes okay. but, you could all, you could kind of take a step back and then change the whole scene. Okay. Okay, good. So, so good way to moderate it. Um, now, how about planning the party with the no statement? You're planning the party, and your partner said no, and then they had a suggestion, and you said no. How was planning your party helpful? I didn't situation? really feel like it got anywhere. <laughs> I had to <laughs> keep just coming up with yeah. random thoughts that didn't relate. Exactly. Coming up with random thoughts that didn't relate doesn't go anywhere, and cognitively, it's difficult. You have to reload every time. You different ideas that you didn't like that one. And this is important in improv. We want to make offers and we want to accept offers and that's how the scene can go somewhere. And this yes and concept, it is the thing that business people seem to love about improv. When I say yes and, I've created a dialogue that's going somewhere. When I say yes but, right, maybe I'm creating a dialogue that's going somewhere but but yes and has a certain level of inspiration to it. Now you don't have to say yes and every single prof professional question, every single professional dialogue that you have, just like you don't say yes and and can escalate it above and above and above for improv, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. If yes and builds, no stops. No kills the scene. So we don't want no in our scenes. Any questions? All right, so let's start with the with the first exercise. Let's have, can I have you four who are against the wall just stay up, everybody else sit down. All right, bad luck. You just happen to be leaning against the wall. Yes. Yeah, it goes to sleep every 15 minutes, and but it doesn't, it doesn't stop recording. Okay. So this first exercise is not really a scene, it's, but it's a way to think about brainstorming. It's a way to think about being spontaneous. It's called ad executives. So I have up here four ad executives. You are going to make a suggestion of a product, a product that does something. And what they're going to do is they're going to come up with a name for that product. They're going to come up with a slogan for that product. They're going to come up with a company spokesperson, and then they're going to come up with a jingle for that product. And we're going to hear their thought process, 
We're going to throw out ideas, we're going to accept offers, and we're going to see how quickly we can get to something, something reasonable. And, you know, this is our first go at it. Don't feel bad if you don't have a great idea right off the bat, but let's just see your process. So our job is to come up with a product that does something. We need a suggestion from the audience. A product that does something. Dan. Um, a sponge that washes your car by itself. Excellent. So a sponge that washes your, it's car, washes your car by itself. So we need a name, slogan for this product, company uh, product spokesperson, and a jingle for this product. All right, so let's give it a shot. So I'll, I'll leave it to you. We'll listen to your thought process. <coughs> you can just just talk just talk out loud with this. Okay. Yeah, we're talking so we can hear. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we need a name. What was that? Company, our, our product Jingle. spokesperson, and, and Jingle. Does the spokesperson have to sing the Jingle? And no. Oh. So it has to be one of us, or is anyone in the world? Oh, anyone in the world. Oh, we, okay, we need a spokesperson. Who Probably. can represent our product? Why would we name the person who is the voice of the product? <laughs> 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 Take enough of the SpongeBob jingle and change it so we don't get. That's a good point. 
time you say the wrong word. Does that make sense? So there are these color things and they'll shock you. You say the wrong word, they shock you. We need... If you mispronounce something wrong. Wait, you mean, mispronounce something wrong. If you mispronounce something. Right? If you mispronounce something, they shock you. So we need a name, slogan for the product, product spokesperson, and product jingle. Go for it. 
correction collar? Not really collar. It's going to be more of a stay. So we should find it a play on words and do what that. What about an auto? So the, 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 the stutter stay? Not stay, stay class. Because so, it's, your, it's your treasure. But then that doesn't really have anything to do with stay correcting words. Instead of class, you can say proper or say stay enunciated. <laughs> <laughs> Something easy for the, the, the consumers to. You could put them in big packages we have a couple of them It's got to have stay in it, so it's got to do stay something. Or something stay. No, stay is stay. Oh, stay. Yeah. They keep your, your collars yeah. in the oh. abandoned world. Stay shot. So when they give the impression that it goes in the collar, but it's not a collar. No, the what? What's right? How about calling it a stick? How about the speak and shot? Shocking children in a head. Well, no, <laughs> he's, got, he's got a he's got a student. Well, yes, and not opposed to that.
just going to keep speaking until it stops electrocuting? <laughs> if they don't know how to enunciate it properly. They'll probably just choose a different word. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make an app for this be easy that goes to your watch. When you say something's wrong, okay, the proper enunciation is going to come up, and you can it's going to give you a voice dialogue so you can say it correctly. All right, so we'll buy it rather than shock you. <laughs> well, it'll still shock you, but then it'll tell you the right answer so you have some incentive and some guidance to know how to go about it speaking. Because it, maybe you just have an accent. Because she's a she's a cover girl model. <laughs> easy breezy, and it doesn't rhyme. It rhymes, but it has nothing to do. <laughs> How about well, speak easy or forever hold your peace. That's that's an album. Then we have the answer. How about speak easy, the fast and efficient way to stop saying things wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but maybe less. We can shorten it. Something, something will not go wrong. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. We'll start with speak easy. Accessory that helps you speak easy. Look great and speak easy. Speak easy. That Look works. great and speak easy. I like it. So, so now we have to make a jingle. Do we? Oh, we have that one. Okay. <laughs> All right, jingle time. Sure. I like it. <laughs> okay, sing it. Oh, I can sing. Oh, can we do yes, yes. but can we do Speak Easy, Breezy, Beautiful Cover Girl? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because it's not just for girls, right? Okay, so just, we just got to take the, the slogan. What, we, what was your original one? If you need to look good, you know, speak proper. Use our shot collar. Yeah, snap, snap like a... You gotta go against the wall and do it, so you do it. 
Can we make it a Is there a way to make it a rat? Receiving it as well. I thought maybe you didn't remember it. 
or maybe, I don't know. Uh, did anyone have the same thought that the idea was good, but the team just wasn't wasn't throwing some gasoline on that flame that they that they had set and incurred? No, I'm saying yes, but no. Sometimes it's like give me a suggestion, and there would be no response to it at all. Okay. And just silence. At least say yes or no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, and, and, and the takeaway here is that you don't necessarily have to say yes to everything someone suggests in your business meeting, but we can see some examples of how the conversation stops when you say no, and how we can get somewhere when you say yes. And maybe there'll be another time to think of the perfect way to format all these ideas. All right. So let's move on to the next exercise. This is little bit more of acting, a little bit more of creating a scene. It's called interview panel. I'm going to bring uh, four or so, I'll bring four folks up at a time. And these four folks will be conducting a press conference. They will be announcing something to us. We'll play press people, we'll play audience members. They'll be explaining themselves, they'll be explaining why they're there, and they'll make a few statements and then we'll uh, open it up to questions, questions from the audience. So I'm going to start with four volunteers, and then I need a suggestion of who these people are and what they are announcing. Does that make sense? All right, good. So let's start with uh, Ricky, Jim, Lee, and Jameson. <coughs> someone who may be on the other side of the table. We are willing to take that, run with it, and improve it where there is room for improvements. And Melania definitely did that. She succeeded in presenting a fantastic speech from uh, the First Lady and uh, made uh, improvements where possible. And the other thing is, she's an immigrant herself, and she has her thoughts. This, this was part of her thoughts and her family that she wanted to talk about, and it connected to the American people. So wasn't really anything that we actually took over and just copied it and saying it. It was, there was also a thought process in it from her own, along with Mrs. Obama's speech that we had. You know, I would like to say, you know, we are, we are all uh, citizens of the United States. We have the center of value. So even we are in different parts, we are Uh, 
let, let, let me take the, for, uh, the first question. Like, like who, who are you and why did you do, why didn't you not bring one person? Why are all four? <laughs> Mr. Trump believes in a unified force. To <laughs> uh, while I am Paul Manafort, campaign director, and we have a fantastic team of our communications specialists here. We have senior speech writer. <laughs> we have our, our, our lead campaign strategist. And, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we have an outside yeah. consulting group. We have the best consultants. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we got the campaign manager, the lead uh, speechwriter, uh, the consultant, and what was Jeremy next? Strategist. Senior strategist. Definitely not the speechwriter. Strategist. <laughs> okay, all right. Que questions? questions? We'll take a few questions at this point. Levani? If I had done the exact same thing that you guys did for me, would you rather not to do it in my test in this class? It was actually for the class. How is it like when you guys do it in a meeting? Like so much of people.
Whenever you're ready. <laughs> we are gathered here today for the purpose of relaying the new compound that our organization, uh, Rutgers Business uh, Communications Incorporated, has discovered. Um, and this compound really targets the human body and recognizes the, the, the deficiencies that the human body has taken on and goes ahead and targets those for correction. And we realize it's a really hot topic right now, um, and we're prepared to answer questions that we are, at this point, able to reduce the public. Okay. So, is it a pill that cures every ill? Is that what you're trying to say? Not just every illness, but it also fixes all your minor imperfections, or major ones if you have any. You'll notice we don't, but uh, <laughs> it, it, it'll, it'll fix anything you speculation so far that about half of the testers died while the other half were cured of all the diseases. Comment on that. So I think we'd like to focus on the half that it cured. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were extremely pleased. <laughs> Magnificent. And uh, their personal testimonies, I think, are pretty positive that this is a very effective drug and way to treat you. Next question. Uh, yes, is this product available to Everyone of all you know areas of society is this only for rich? Are we only going to have beautiful rich people, and then you'll know who's poor because they're still ugly? Is that what you're saying to me? Our company is really focused on providing a better quality of life for all patients. We look to, to whoever can, can achieve that, and that's between their doctor and the patient themselves. And we really um, we focus on that interaction, and we try to make the most of it. Next question. <laughs> to make that happen, though, everyone needs to have access. So if you're going to price it at $90,000 a month, I don't think everyone can afford it. Well, we have to price it at its value, and um, that will remain to be seen once it's released into uh, the white market. But, but that just proves your own point. Most of the people who can afford it will remain. I may, as the, the CFO of this organization, I want to remind the public that it has taken 20 years of investments to get this drug to market. And so we have responsibility to our shareholders to pay back that debt. This is the cost of the drug that is really, literally changing. I'd like to jump in as the lead scientist and legal writer. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a process that is in development. We've only just now found the compound, and, and testing has been very promising for those who tried. And it was, uh, as we get better at making this thing, it, it's going to uh, become a cheaper process, and it'll be available to a, a wider range of people. Our ultimate goal is for everyone to, to be able to have access to this compound, because none of us likes looking at it. I want to be different, so I want to be slightly imperfect. Can I do that? <laughs> or is this all or nothing? Our organization recognizes the value of you know, unique personalities. And so this, this product rec uh, targets the, the unique molecular imperfections that cause you decreased quality of life. We encourage everybody to be themselves, and we encourage everybody to recognize value in that. And so our organization is promoting that but on a macro level, on a micro level, Really looking at the science and ensuring that we can provide more better quality of life. Next question. Great, great. So they were all on the same page, right? They're all working together. Uh, I like, especially when Al introduced himself and said who he was, it just gave me a better sense of the team. Um, good idea. Daniel stepped up and he made a very bold. Assessment, very bold statement, and I forget who it was. Evan, did you jump right? Or Al, you jumped in and said yes. I don't know, whatever. Someone, the next person who jumped in, like was right on page with that offer, and, uh, and we got some laughs out of it. Made sense. Kept you stuck to your story, your unified story. Uh, any, any comments? All right, let's try one more. One or maybe two more. One more. All right, so uh, volunteers. Mike, Marilyn. <laughs> Uh, Jose, who else has we got? Uh, Jose, Jose, and Alex. Thank you for helping volunteers. All right, 
So um, why don't uh, why don't we make you all a uh, a rock and roll band? You're just kind of this is your press conference to kind of introduce yourself, talk about your latest hit single, maybe tell us a little bit about how the band formed, plans for the future, just uh, just that kind of thing. We'll start with who we are and what instruments we play. Um, I'm Marilyn. I'm on the cowbell. I'm Jose. I'm from the south. And uh, since I was a kid, I always uh, like to play the guitar. So uh, definitely there is a huge uh, future there. So you don't need, uh, you, know, you don't have to go to the school for uh, just uh, doing the work uh, you're passionate in. So um, definitely I would recommend. I'm Mike, I'm on the drums, I'm upset. I'm A-Rock, I'm, I'm the lead of the, the group. And we're here to promote our new single, which is available on iTunes, uh, Midnight Tonight, uh, for $1.29, and get our number one hit tune. Yeah, our uh, number, key, uh, number one, number one is, um, is top five in Billboard, so uh, I highly recommend any questions? Uh, yeah. What's your band's name again and how is it inspired? It's a. Uh, <laughs> don't really start that. Let's <laughs> <laughs> so, so start our name A Rock. <laughs> oh, we, we started as a. in our garage, just all of us. We had a. we met in school, and uh, the, the name of our, our. of our group came from our town. We were the Malibu Rockers. And uh, we practiced every day. And uh, I, we grew a global crowd, and before you know it, we're the best-selling rock <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Um, um, group in the world. Absolutely. Um, and we came to the last one. Uh, well, we just found some. Yeah, we just yeah, have a question from a fan. <laughs> yeah, okay. so, what was the name of that single at that time? It's called More Caliban. <laughs> <laughs> Sales and uh, probably in five years we're gonna recover all our money that we invest the last to make a lot of money on tours too. Yeah, and every day we're practicing coming up with new material. Yeah, yeah. Are you on the South or Cleaver? I'm sorry. Are you on the South? Yeah, our songs are for everybody, young and old. All ages. We have Cleaver. Sex-related sex related things in your I think we make music about life and having a good time, and it relates to the whole public. So we try not to censor our creativity, but in, in radio, it's being received well. And there's always we, we like to use our music as a learning experience. Um, you know, there's lessons in what we've said and done, and, and sometimes those lessons are for kids to not do what, we, what we're doing. So you don't deny the expensive use of LSD. Next question. <laughs> uh, use or uh, reference to, uh, again. It helps with the creativity, so. It makes our, our lyrics more colorful. things 
going on women's men's group, including as you refer to the, the LSD. So from day to day, <laughs> we just start over. And you know, we're still together as a group, we're still here, we're still making music. So we just take every day as a new opportunity to get back together. And the media also has a way to edit things, which is kind of portrays things a little bit more seamlessly. Yeah. The bottom line is you can make happy. Where's your next tour going? We're headed to Asia. <laughs> All of Asia has worked. China, China. Yes. Yes, yes. Can you repeat these comments on uh, the use of drugs and the impact it's having on audience, specifically children? Uh, sir, um, I believe that there was a uh, agreement to not record. Is that a recording? This is not a report. Excellent, excellent. Have a seat. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Good stuff. Um, some good ideas flowing. Good practice of spontaneity. They were you know, feeding off each other on the same page. Let's move on to the next exercise. All right, this is called job interview. How this is going to work is I'm going to get a suggestion from the audience about some sort of job position that is open. Then I'm going to get another suggestion from the audience about a very unique skill the applicant has. And the more extreme, the crazier, the better. Do you have a question or a suggestion? I have a suggestion. Okay, hold off on the suggestion. <laughs> so we're going to have some job description and some really crazy unique skill. This scene is going to end, hopefully, with this person being hired. Now, if they just start off the scene, oh, you have this crazy skill, you're hired, fine, right? Me and the audience are going to be like, that story doesn't make sense. So we want our actors to find a way to make this story make sense. How are they going to do that? Well, they're going to ask questions. <laughs> they're going to think creatively about how this skill could apply. Someone might hint at something. The interviewer is going to say, yes, and maybe you could also take that talent you have with lawnmowers and like chop up the stuff in the finance room or some creative way to think about how we can make this story work. Make sense? Okay, good. All right, so let's get Evan and Jim. Evan is the interview E and Jim is the interview er. So what is Jim interviewing for? What's the job position? All right, so uh, as we were uh, talking about earlier, so safety is a chief negotiator for people's soul. Uh, and uh, he's interviewing for that. He's interviewing for a chief negotiator. Okay, so it's Satan. <laughs> <laughs> chief negotiator for people's souls. What is Evan's crazy talent? And don't think of something that's obviously a good talent for chief negotiator. Think of something crazy. Danny. Usually look at uh, burden that's stirring in people's gardens. Fantastic, right? So this is <laughs> <laughs> he can easily pick out bird nests that are in people's gardens, right? Like that's yeah, that's kind of, like, like, like see them or physically get them? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, physically pick them out. Like that's what's on your resume. All right. So let's have you two have a discussion and see if we can make this story work. Go for it. So I'm Satan. You're saying you're looking for the chief interviewer for negotiator for people's souls. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Okay. I just, I 
That's it. It's cutting. Yeah, yeah. Feel it all. Oh, perfect. That's awesome. So, so I, I guess can you can you give me a little bit more description of what it is? I'm looking for? Uh, we, well, so a little bit of background on Milton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm familiar with Milton, but no, please. So we've been around for quite <laughs> 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 a while now. Um, yeah, as you can see. Uh, uh, red, fiery kind of thing. Uh, yeah. The guy is really good feng shui. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. You'll notice as you walk through the, the gates of hell, uh -huh. uh, everything is laid out pretty well. Yeah. Very yeah. symmetrical. It's pretty gorgeous. Yeah. 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 Very good um, our staff here is pretty good. We have some, some pretty terrible operators. Yeah. Yeah, really work on yeah, I saw them over there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we'll kind of send it back. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, awesome. Really super. The worst of the worst. So yeah. We set this bar very high. Awesome. <laughs> Souls, right? We you, do. Yeah, you're, you're looking for a guy to negotiate for souls. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I do better than anybody else in the world. Any of those world leaders, any of your demons, pick out birds in this. I see them, <laughs> and I can get them. You're thinking to yourself, well, how does that help? I am, yes. I am. Yeah, I thought you might be. See? Uh, well, I, I, can see the, I can see the bird's nest, uh, and, and really, when you think about it, the bird's nest and the soul really aren't that different. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's the whole being completely different. <laughs> a lot of similarities that people don't recognize, and, uh, and I, I believe that being able to pick out bird's nests uh, isn't too different from being able to pick out what it is this person wants to hear in order to give me that soul and have them come back. Now, I don't want to say you don't have a snowball's chance in hell, <laughs> just telling me you can pick out birds does not make it. No, this is a, a negotiating position, right? And it seems like you go through life trying to just pick birds yeah, the birds. The, the nest isn't going to come by itself. Right. I mean, I could just grab it, but that's it's mean. I don't want to be mean. No. But, but you're, you're, you are coming to work with it. Yeah. But, but no, 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 it's fine. Don't worry about it. it I, 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 <laughs> work with, we can send you upstairs. No, it's fine. Uh, this is a way more interesting job, I think. Um, yeah, you, you, you work with the birds, you talk to the birds, and you, and you, you kind of figure out, you kind of have to sense where the birds are. So, so here's what a lot of people don't understand about picking up birds. They, they think, oh, he just is able to see, you know, twigs in a place where twigs aren't supposed to be. No, it's not that at all. For example, no, no, no. I, I, I said, no, and that's fine. I don't, I don't need to bring the birds that's here. I just need souls. Um, yeah. So you, you kind of sense where the birds are, and, and you, you get, you get a feeling for their, their, their location, their dreams, their hopes, their yearn, yearnings. Yes, the, we the, crush those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but I can, I can see them. I can sense them. I can work with them, and I can, I can play with that to get those souls down here. so easy to get onto a location where the bird's nest is. Maybe it's private property, maybe it's... Uh, so, so you gotta, you may have so to... You well, oh, you're talking about that. Every, every now and then, yeah. Uh, so you, you gotta create some distractions sometimes. So, you know, you, you set off a fire alarm here, you stampede some cattle there, you do what you gotta do to get uh, to get, get to that bird's nest. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta feel and sense where it is, where it wants to be.
right, so that ended with a hiring, which was good, which was the goal. Um, how, how did we like the story, though? There, were we satisfied with, the, with Jim's hiring decision or Jim's hiring process? Yeah, I see something here nodding. It was funny, for sure. Yeah, much to work. And Jim, okay, Jim didn't have much to work with. Is there, is there ways he could have created more to work with? Okay, so he asked Evan a bunch of questions, and Evan had some interesting thoughts. He said, uh, negotiation. He said, it's like uh, hell and birds are kind of the same. Um, now, Jim could have still stayed in the role of being the uptight, say, interviewer, but he could have he could have used yes and more. He could have said, yeah, setting off a stampede, all right, that's just the kind of guy we need to do this. Or he could have done something with the, the birds and the souls being the same thing. He's like, yeah, that is kind of our motto down here, you know, <laughs> souls are like birds. <laughs> <laughs> And then I think Evan would have picked right up on that and said, yes, that's exactly how I approach my job. I think the, the reason why it seemed took a while and why it ultimately just ended with some, oh, okay, what, how did it end? But there's no way I can fire you anytime so you're hired? Okay, that didn't really satisfy, satisfy our desire to see them solve this problem. Right? We're audiences. We paid money for this improv show. We want to see some good solutions, right? Right? We want to see you interact with each other. We want to see you thrown off your game when Evan says something weird. And we want to see you come up with a quirky way to make it make sense. Yeah. I thought um, right off the bat, too, I think Evan made sure what the goal is. Because I don't think the goal was ever really defined. It was kind of, they didn't really, it was, it was hard for him to connect and even start relating his discovery. Okay, okay. So so we could use some clarity right off the bat. So let's try one more of these, and let's try to, I'll, I'll give you some techniques to try to make it fast. Can I get two volunteers? All right, Daniel and Nick, fantastic. Okay, so what I want to do with this one is I want you to, to make this hiring decision. I want to handshake your hired as fast as possible. But at the same time, I don't want you to say, I, you know, all right, you're hired, fine. Give us a reason to make it believable that you're going to make this hiring decision as quickly as possible. All right, so Nick is the interviewer. Daniel has a unique skill. What is Nick interviewing for? What's the job? I mean, I would be interviewing. Evan. Uh, mascot for a minor league volleyball team. Okay, so <laughs> Nick is interviewing for a mascot. He's looking for a mascot for a minor league volleyball team. And what is Daniel's unique skill? Okay, he can, he can <laughs> eat lots of hot dogs. Okay, so we're going to start the interview, and your goal is to make the close the deal as fast as possible, but only in a way that makes sense. If it makes, <coughs> makes so sense. I'm going to be a mascot. Yeah, you're, you're interviewing for the mascot for the minor league volleyball team, and pretty much the only thing on your resume is that you eat, eat right. hot dogs. <laughs> no chairs? Just standing yeah, here. Okay. Dan, how are you? Welcome, I'm good. To, uh, I'm welcome good. to our organization today. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So I'm Nick. I'm going to be the hiring manager for the uh, the uh, minor league volleyball mascot okay. uh, position. Pleasure to meet so you. So I brought you here. Your resume looked pretty good. And yeah. um, um, tell me about yourself. Sure. So I grew up in, uh, in Eantown, not too far away. I was right next to the baseball field. And I always saw the individuals that were getting ready to costume up into the mascot um, uh, uh, costume and how they always prepared to be able to stay the whole duration of the game um, lively and enthusiastic. And one of the things that they did is really stock up on energy and, and, and uh, carbohydrates, specifically hot dogs. One of the things that I really took from that experience is to really hone in on my ability to down as many hot dogs as, as I could and really perfect that. And so I think that with that background and with that experience, I'd really be able to perfect the skill of being a master. So I'm going to cut right to the chase. Sure. And uh, we're looking for someone high energy, high impact, who can yep. go out game after game. Yes. You know, minor league volleyball is on the rise. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it all over the news. ESPN, yes. we got some great players. Yes. So we need someone who's going to be, you know, always super energetic and have that 
momentum, keep that momentum, get the crowd really going. Yeah. So um, our mascot happens to be Willie the Hot Dog. Mm -hmm. So um, I think if you're able to fuel yourself through your passion for hot dogs, and it kind of connects with our mascot mm -hmm. itself, um, I think that uh, that your your ability is going to take you far in this role if you're interested um, to keep fueled and ready and, and get the crowd yeah. kind of pumped. So it's yeah, going to yeah. be hot dog eating hot dogs. It's kind of weird, but well, it, no, it's it, good it, because it I know you guys also have a, a stand that sells hot dogs. And so if you have a, a, a mascot that's enthusiastic about eating hot dogs and encourages others to, you'll not only promote your your team with the mascot, but you'll promote your business as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. And Dan, uh, I see on your resume it just says eats lots of hot dogs. But how many hot dogs can you actually consume? About 41 and a half in under two minutes. Why the half? You know, sometimes I don't want my, my viewers to really think that I hit 42. Um, so by leaving it at a half, I always kind of keep them thinking, why the half? <laughs> I see what you're so saying. They're really, they're really, they're going. It really sticks with them. Yeah. You, and so they'll really remember 41 and a half. It wasn't just an obscure 40 number. It was really 41 and a half. Right. And lastly, look, we, we can't have someone who, uh, I know you eat a lot of hot dogs. Do you have a history of choking? Are you, do you have a technique? Because I, I, you know, we really don't want to hire a mascot that uh, may choke and then potentially scare the crowd. Uh, you know, at women, yeah, you know, minor league volleyball. You know, yeah, we yeah. got a male and female crowd, so we definitely. No, it's, it's a valid concern. Okay. Eating hot dogs does come with technique. With practice of that technique, one can practice the chew, <laughs> <laughs> the chew and swallow technique. Okay. And so when you practice that to perfection, along with some fluids. On an as-needed basis, you can really perfect that technique and ensure you don't you don't uh, choke at all. And it's really been practiced on a national level. This technique, it's been tried and proven. And so we can ensure that you won't have that type of um, performance in front of your individuals, in front of your crowd, especially when you have a business that sells hot dogs. Okay. Well. So Dan, I'll tell you what, I like your energy. I think you're the man for the job. Thank I just you. need to sign this waiver in case yes, something does absolutely. go wrong. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to be liable. Absolutely. And uh, I look forward to having you on the team. Pleasure. Thank Pleasure. you so much. Thank you. Nailed it. All right, excellent. Good job. All right, we had fun. We got they got a chance to think creatively about how they would position themselves in a job skill. Right, they're feeding off of each other. Any comments while I get set up for the next the next exercise? So this next exercise, we're going to do some PowerPoint presentations. I've got some presentations, some PowerPoint slides. Uh, for each of them, I'm going to have two presenters come up and give a PowerPoint lecture. Now, the trick is you don't know what's on the PowerPoint. So you're going to have to improv. You also want to work together as a team. <laughs> and you want this to make sense. Any questions? You'll 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 find out in a moment. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna give you the uh, clicker. All right, this uh, to the right is forward, and you'll just you'll click. To, I'll, we'll pull up the first slide. I'll have two people come up. You'll start the presentation, and you'll just click through, and it'll be obvious when it gets to the last slide. And you're like, okay, so that's the end. You want this story to make sense. So you want what you're saying to match what's on the screen. You want what you're saying to match what your partner's saying. And you want to just have some fun with it. All right, so let's have uh, Jameson and Renew. All right. All right, so uh, here's, the, here's the clicker. I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you two start when you're ready. Hello, everybody. Welcome uh, to our presentation. I'm Renu. I'm Jameson, and we are here with the Car Recovery Corporation, and we're looking to have your investment. We need investors 
This is a ground level operation here. We think we can go all the way. We could be a Fortune 500 company. The only thing that we're lacking right now is you. Okay. So, a little bit of our corporate history. We were founded by Mr. Wolfgang Uberusen, who is just a fantastic man, hails from northern Germany, and he just has a legacy of success. And the other founder is Simonus. Simonius. <laughs> Look, we know him as Sticky Fingers, and he's an excellent <laughs> businessman, and he gets his hands on the money. Regardless of how that happens, he has a legacy of profit, and profit is something that we will bring to you as our investors. <laughs> All right. So our company motto is, of course, cars, not people. I'm sure many of you are wondering what that means. <laughs> Sometimes I cry thinking about it. <laughs> You're right. It really does touch us deep within. We care about We're cars, so passionate. not people. Yeah. Okay. We're here for the cars. We want to refurbish old cars, and we want to sell them to unsuspecting people. So these cars are not high-quality vehicles. That's why we have so much margin in our sales. We buy crappy cars, we put a bow on them, and we sell them to consumers. We make money. We're all about the cars, not about our end consumers. But as an investor, you look at the profit potential here, and it's significant. And of course, with sticky fingers, I mean, many of our cars are stolen, hence the <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, with VIN erasing technology, we can pretty much make them untraceable. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And this is normally where we find our cars. <laughs> so, this is the Everest Gorge in northern Germany. And it is a dumping ground for a lot of stolen and used cars, many of which are, are no longer running. But of course, we can patch them up so that they are running, you know, for enough distance to get a test drive in at least. Some of them are found under the water, but we reel it in and we fix them. Yeah, absolutely. We reel it in just like we reel it our customers. And once we have them hooked, they're not getting away. Nope. <laughs> just like that one. So this is a 2002 uh, Ford uh, Fiesta. Of course, it's seen better days, but you know when we get that check, it's a Fiesta in our office. It's a big deal for us, and we're not going to let a sale go by. All right, this is our recovery process. We have a fantastic recovery team. We have a series of cranes and salvage vehicles that we can use to recover vehicles, to recondition them, and to get them back on the road again. <laughs> Our recovery process is not perfect. We understand that we have room for improvement. <laughs> As you can see, uh, sticky fingers here kind of lost control of the wheel. <laughs> but again, we, we're not pretending that we have our, a perfect operation at this point. That's why we have so much upside. I mean, we've been running a profit even with some of our recent issues in terms of vehicle recovery but again we have a plan in place to uh, make our company efficient and effective at recovering I don't, cars. I don't know if you remember but this was actually done on purpose it's part of our recovery process it's oh right to, it's part of the, it's uh, to the hammer it in and let people know sometimes mistakes happen but we're here to fix it for you yep. and no mistake is too bad to fix we've learned that in our company's history has shown that we've gone through a series of issues, but again, we've resurfaced, reinvented ourselves, and uh, we get cars back on the road regardless of what it takes. <laughs> <laughs> and cranes. Of course. You know, we've shown you all of our issues here. We are completely transparent with regards to the issues our company faces, but again, you bring us cash, we will turn it into more and more cash. Lots and lots of cash. More cash than you know what to do with. Again, so thank, thank you again you. for listening to our pitch. Uh, again, we're a company with a lot of upside potential, very few risks. We've uh, displayed our risks for you very transparently. We're just looking for your investments so you can grow your money with us. Yes? So what strategies or techniques are you using to help people make more Of, uh, 
it's a work in progress and we learn new things every day, but with your investment, that's what helps us. <laughs> there are a number of untapped markets as well. There are places that are not on lakes that would significantly reduce our risk of vehicle loss and our cost of reconditioning and procuring new vehicles. So that's what we really want to spend our investment on is new property, uh, new recovery grounds. Good job. All right. They stayed with it. All right. They were consistent with each other. Any comments for them? That's that's a fun one. Yes, I heard Dave say that that really happened. I saw those, uh, I saw those slides. <laughs> mm. All right. Uh, let's do this one. Uh, do I have two volunteers who would like to do this exercise? It's actually one of your last chances to... to Anything in this class. We're coming down to the end. We've got a couple more of these. Um, all right, Marilyn and uh, David. Coleman, I'm here uh, representing Servion Video Surveillance. Dave Trepanier, um, I'm here to assist. So, we all <laughs> we all know that there's cameras everywhere. Do you know where those cameras come from? We're going to tell you. They come from Servion Video Surveillance. So here's a couple of different places that um, you can put cameras. You can use cameras on freeways to detect speed. You can use uh, cameras on even more crowded freeways to pick up even more speeders. <laughs> you can use fish-eyed cameras to spy on your workers. Or you can use the smaller, more discreet cameras in your retail environment to spy on your shoppers. Our pledge is, wherever you go, whatever you do, whoever you are, you are under surveillance. Matter of fact, we have cameras in here right now looking at you. We're watching you, watching us, watching you. Okay? We are everywhere. So why wouldn't you want to be involved with the best, most uh, prolific uh, surveillance company that really we have a monopoly on the market. There's not much you can do about it. Right. No. People say, do I really need this many cameras and this many televisions? Obviously, the answer is yes. Now, do your employees steal from you? Yes. Well, of course. <laughs> do you want to watch every single one of them? Yes. <laughs> is it a little inappropriate that the camera follows them to the bathroom? I say no. <laughs> they are stealing from you. <laughs> one camera per employee. <laughs> so, human surveillance is the new go green. What do we mean by that? Well, we can save the environment if we watch everything that everybody's doing all the time. Yeah, you know that jerk that gets a second cup when he already had a cup of coffee? He couldn't have brought it back to the coffee machine? His personal camera will tell you. When you're at the buffet, you're supposed to get a new plate. But why? You're wasting water washing dishes. We can watch every single person go in every single restaurant, pick up every single plate. And we'll also include some um, enforcement to environmental policies That's that right. we actually help create. When people know they're being surveilled all the time, cameras everywhere, all the time, on everybody, the fact is they're just afraid to do things wrong. You can come up with all kinds of wacky environmental rules, and they'll do them. Because we know if they didn't. True story. Just last night, I saw one of our cameras in action on a Facebook Live feed at the RNC. And we watched people pulling napkin after napkin after napkin at the, 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 the condiment station. Um, in conjunction with the Late Show, uh, they had the platform for us to get into the convention and monitor people 
just snatching napkins. What a waste. That's right. And we had that bum kicked out. Another, another area that you might need cameras, you think, do you just want to watch the president of Russia while he's giving an enthusiastic speech? Well, no. You would miss great opportunities where he's fishing without a shirt on. Now, that hunk <laughs> really ought to be seen all the time, right? Having a camera on foreign leaders so you can keep track of them is a good idea. You know, he might pull a fish out of the water that is an endangered species. Our Go Green initiative will immediately find that. He's usually on horseback as well with right. no shirt on. Part of our environmental activism is also animal rights. So we'll watch him make sure he's treating that horse right. That's right. I heard he was going to do an Old Spice commercial. <laughs> we got to watch that. <laughs> so if you partner with us, you'll get quality design. You'll get validation in production. You'll get a full product line of every single camera that's available in the entire world. And you can trust us to watch you when you forget that you're being watched. <laughs> <laughs> They were believable presenters, right? <laughs> we believe that they worked together as a team. They made sense of all that. Did you have a comment, Daniel? Yeah, I like how uh, Marilyn offered something uh, like what she said about the forest emissions. It's not just a camera documenting the forest emissions. Yeah, <laughs> and especially I hadn't thought of this before, that human surveillance is the new go green, so people will pollute less if they're constantly being watched with a camera. Uh, did, did anyone uh, see this, read the, read the title of the slide? And you're wondering, like, wait, why, why are they talking about this in their partnership with uh, Go Green? It's, it, you're not going to catch everything. Did, did you two see that? Did you see that, Dave? That it was actually well, a partnership? That, no. Okay. <laughs> we distracted you were distracted with your the great vibe that you had going. You two were clearly partners who were uh, committed to selling this company the same way. All right, uh, a few volunteers to finish us up here. Uh, all right, Nick. Nick and Shruti. Hi everyone, my name is Shruti. And my name is Nick, and today we're going to be giving you a brief company profile on our company, Dragline Surface Excavation Technology and Equipment. So to just kind of kick things off here. <laughs> how, do, how does one go about mining? There's so many minerals and things to actually mine. Um, we like coal. Coal is the new gasoline. It's, it's going to be powering everything soon. Uh, uh, Tesla is even on board with making coal-powered cars. They're going to need industries to fuel that, you know, to fuel that commodity. There's multiple methods to mine coal, um, and Dragline uses both of them, which are perfect. We got open cast mining and underground mining. Don't worry about what those are. Just know that they're great and that we do them both. Our ship. <laughs> this, it looks Very old. Fancy. It's got an Instagram filter on it. It's a recent picture, I promise, even though it's black and white. This is just one of our many advanced equipment options that we use to get that coal out of the ground. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Hazard symbol, red alert, right? Don't be alarmed. There's only minor disadvantages to mining coal, such as nuclear explosions and radiation, they sound worse than they are. Uh, there's all levels, you know, there's level 10 
alerts and there's level one, we haven't had any instances or any problems yet so far. So we have some alternative uses. Um, uh, we can fuel amusement park rides, uh, water purification systems, and social media database. <laughs> so how many people use a Brita filter at home? Who's got Brita? How do you think they filter that water? Anybody? <laughs> yes, but through coal. There's coal in the filters. If you ever notice, there's that little floating black residue at the bottom. That's coal that we dragline pull out of the ground so you can have fresh, clean water every day. Thank you <laughs> for your time today. And uh, I hope you've learned a lot about Dragline and really what we do as a company and kind of our core values, which is you, the consumer. So thank you for your time today. Good, good. We, we had some fun watching them solve that problem. All right, how are they going to explain that this is going to be used as a, a social media database? All right, and Nick came up with the how it can be used to filter water, which satisfied us. And we're like, oh, yeah, okay, the, the slide and the story, and that all makes sense. So uh, it's a good stuff. Any comments on that scene? Yeah, it's the last chance to comment. It didn't make, the slide didn't make any sense. So <laughs> 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 You're right. This slide didn't make any sense, but they made it make sense. They solved the problem somehow, and they did it. Congratulations. Uh, I hope you got a lot out of this material. I hope you thought about how it can increase your flexibility, spontaneity. I hope you thought about how yes and can help brainstorming processes when necessary, and how you can introduce it to some of your professional lives, some of your professional dialogues. You may not use it all the time, but sometimes when you're stuck, you may say, all right, let's do that yes and technique. And let's see if we can solve this problem. In addition to that, I loved having you in class this summer. I hope you got a lot out of that material as well. And would love to stay in touch with you. Like I said, hit me up on LinkedIn. Keep me posted on your professional progress. And have a great rest of the summer. Thank you. Yeah.